find the direction of the evasive concurrent motive. Hi everyone, in this video I'll show you how I'm using ASI Air Pro with a Canon DSLR and Canon 200mm lens and also auto guiding to do astrophotography. I'll go through focusing process both for DSLR and uh, auto guider and also how I polar align using ASI Air Pro. By the way, I'm in a beautiful Portugal in the place called Monte do Viso and it's pretty good for astronomy and astrophotography because it's pretty elevated above a sea level. It's, uh, the altitude here is around 850 meters. And uh, because of that, the light pollution here is pretty low. Also, this place is just beautiful. It's uh, surrounded by uh, windmills and you can see the shadow is uh, crossing me each uh, second. And uh, it's just a great place to have a picnic, not only astronomy, or watch the sunset, which is uh, going right now. And another very good thing is that it's pretty close to the city I live, Porto. It's just one hour by car. So it's Sunday today and I have to work tomorrow, but I'm expecting to finish like at around midnight, because by the way, also the moon is rising at the same time. So I have a plenty of time to do some astrophotography. Let me first assemble all my stuff and then I'll show you what it has. By the way, I apologize for the noise you can hear during the video because I could not expect that this tower is actually emitting radio which is caught by my external microphone for the camera and I had to put some layers of uh, aluminum foil to actually prevent of all of it coming uh, through the mic and uh, this foil is producing some sounds. So sorry for that, I'm gonna think about it next time. So now as I assemble the thing, uh, yes, it can look a bit monstrous and I will explain it now. This setup is actually heavily inspired by Peter Zelinka videos on the Skyguider Pro and some tips. First, you can notice that this part uh, attached to array axis is actually flipped upside down because initially this uh, declination mount is here so it, it was made in order to have a better leverage and allow the more weight on this part so I have a bigger uh, counterweight bar length but the problem with this is that when you do this uh, the knob which is used to attach uh, this part to the mount is actually getting into the way of declination uh, bracket and uh, you can't freely rotate it but I can show you from this side so you can see that I replaced it with a um, just average screw I don't remember if it's uh, like 30 millimeters but now it allows freely to rotate and then you just tighten it once and that's it it's all uh, attached to the Skywatcher wedge from the Star Adventure. I had it uh, for a long time and I decided to give it a shot today. I just actually received it. My parents sent me last parts of my gear from Russia because uh, I used to do astrophotography there and then I moved to Portugal, stopped doing this and now I'm getting back to this hobby. 
So all of that is on the uh, EQ6 uh, heavy duty tripod with uh, two inches legs and uh, yeah it can probably it's overkill for that. I used to use this Manfrotto tripod but it's actually not very sturdy for this uh, amount of weight. Those legs are doing really well and uh, very reliable and sturdy tripod. For the power source I'm just using the simple lead battery for so it's basically 12 ampere hours capacity so it should give me enough power to to run it for uh, several hours yeah it probably it's not very safe to just attach basically this wire directly to the ASI Air Pro but yeah probably I will work on some better solution with the fuse or some protection so let's get to this part uh, the most important one so here uh, I also listen to the advice of Peter to use L bracket in order to attach auto guider uh, to the camera but um, it, at first I also used it attached directly to the camera but then I've noticed that if I try to attach it to the lens it can give me first of all a better balancing because actually the center of mass of this uh, whole thing is actually behind this leg and uh, also I can try to put SI Air Pro right in between and have a very compact piece which allows me not to have a bunch of wires going down to the ASI Air Pro if it's in this basket. It's the first time I'm using this kind of setup because I'm not sure how uh, Skyguider Pro will do uh, under this additional weight here and because this part takes more of the volume uh, I think uh, the wind can be an issue. That's why I actually put my car right here because wind is usually going from that direction. So I'm trying to protect it. So you can see USB wires are pretty short and they are going directly here and uh, to the camera. Yeah, this piece I don't like uh, because it, yeah, it's a naked PCB but uh, I have no other solution for now and it's basically just DC converter converter from the 12 uh, volt output to the 7.4 or 8 volts input of the camera yeah and by the way the camera is the Canon uh, 450DA so it's uh, astronomy modified with a removed uh, IR filter uh, this is the Canon 70 to uh, 200 millimeters f4 lens, which I use for a long time for uh, astrophotography. It already has some uh, scratches on the lens itself in the middle, but it doesn't seem to appear on pictures, so I keep using it until I get some uh, better equipment. And uh, also I use the dew heater here, which is uh, going directly to the first uh, uh, DC output of ASI Air Pro, because I believe all of them can have a PWM, so you can regulate the voltage coming to the heater directly in the application. For auto guiding I'm using, already became classic ASI 120mm Mini. I guess it's now the most popular solution. Unfortunately, I couldn't find their guide scope available, so I bought, um, I don't remember, is it uh, the TS Optics one, but it serves pretty well. Yeah, of course, it, the only problem, it doesn't have a focuser, so I have to manually like try to catch it, which I'll show you later. Yeah, another thing is that uh, there's a wire for auto-guiding going from this ASI uh, mini camera. So it's getting darker here and I'm waiting for first stars to appear, basically polar star to start focusing and polar aligning. The sky isn't looking very good, I s still see high clouds there and I hope they will disappear because forecasts uh, were all saying that it's gonna be super clean, but let's see, you never know.
So as you can see Jupiter is already on the sky so I can use it in order to focus all of my cameras and after that polar align. I have here a custom made Bakhtin of mask. Uh, I think it's uh, milled from the plastic so it fits really nicely and I'll show you how it looks from the ASI Air Pro. So when you first use an ASI Air Pro and you want to align your camera to point to some star you better use bin 4 option as it's much faster than loading pictures from the camera when you want to preview them. So if I set my exposure to 0 0.5 seconds so it's pretty fast and here you can see the downloading is actually very fast. Whatever I see here it's not actually what I would like to see. Let me first point it to the Jupiter. I think now it's pointing Jupiter. Let's verify that. Yes, it's here. But uh, I just want to show you how different it looks uh, with a Bakhtin of mask. So I put Bakhtin of mask here. So yeah, finally we have a special pattern of a Bakhtin of mask. So you see that this line is a little bit offset from the center of these two crossing lines. So our goal is to actually put this line right in the middle. I would say that it's almost focused, just a slight rotation. Yes, I think now it's pretty good. For a guiding camera it's gonna be a bit more tricky. Yes, I finally found the Jupiter here and it's showing really nice picture. So now what I'm gonna do is to carefully slide back and forth. Yes, now I think it's a pretty well focused. So as you can see the focusing process is done, let's go to the polar alignment. For polar alignment what I'm gonna do is to roughly point it uh, at the polar star using the built-in polar scope. And then we're gonna get back to the ASI Air Pro to do the exact polar alignment. So now we have our polar scope pointing to the north star. Now we need to point our cameras there. So now I'm gonna demonstrate how ASI Air Pro is gonna detect my focal length because setting it the way it's mentioned on the lens is not very accurate due to the crop factor of the camera itself. So I'm setting it to zero at the beginning. I'm taking a test shot and plate solve. Now it says that its focal length is 195 millimeters. It's calculated my field of view. So now it's gonna work correctly with the dithering settings, with the plate solving, and it's very important to do so. And it's also very important for polar alignment because this is how it's gonna actually work by plate solving. So let's start polar alignment procedure. I have no other better way uh, except just to put my smartphone on the ground and uh, just launch all the necessary commands. So I finally got it polar aligned more or less, at least it tells me that my accuracy should be below 2 arc minutes. Now it's something like that, so let's point to some target like Andromeda Galaxy. It's actually what I was gonna shoot today and uh, see how it goes. I want to verify that it's actually framed nicely and for that I'm gonna set my uh, ASI Air Pro to preview mode with a binning 4 10 seconds exposure 
so let's see how it looks like oh yeah so Andromeda Galaxy is right here in the middle of the frame and it's very nice that's what I wanted so now we can get right into the guiding section here and uh, we choose the exposure as uh, 0 0.5 seconds let's see how it looks like so let's pick up one star and start guiding using it maybe not that bright this one should work better so before we proceed uh, for uh, ioptron sky gather pro we need to set up uh, guiding only in array axis for that here as you can see there's a deck mode uh, setting now it sets to off initially it can be auto or north or south so you set it to off in order to turn it off completely so after that as i pick the star i press the start guiding button and what it's doing is trying to calibrate it by sending signals through the st4 port to move mount back and forth so it understands how much signal uh, corresponds to the movement of pixels on the screen so as you can see it says here that it's guiding right now and on this graph we can see how our guiding process goes and what's our accuracy so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna make 180 seconds exposure with the bin one just to test how good is image and uh, is there any star trailing and so on so it's now in the process of downloading this huge three minutes exposure picture it's pretty good actually just look at that i can already post it and get an a pod so the stars looks good no trailing i guess there's even dusty details in the galaxy i must say that the conditions are not very good now it's getting really cloudy so i'm worrying if i even can get at least 30 minutes of exposure but still it was cool to test this setup it seems to work fine so i guess i'll stick to this configuration for a while